What is up, Green Bay Packers fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Draft brought to you by the good folks at Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin, just minutes from beautiful Lambeau Field. And I'm in a good mood today because we are talking about one of my very favorite prospects in the NFL Draft, and that is Toledo cornerback Quinion Mitchell. Uh, not from the most, you know, obviously famous of schools, not from a super high major program, um, but absolutely blew up the combine in Indianapolis. And I got to tell you, has been just shooting up draft boards, even for me. I mean, I had him thinking, you know, the mid 40s or 50s after my first kind of run through everything. And and just, you know, in 2.0, he was higher. And now in 3.0, he's higher. He's not going to get any higher now. I'm pretty good with my, with my rankings now. But my my third version of my big board that took into account everything that happened in Indianapolis, that took into account more film study, Um he is, he's got a high rank and we'll talk about that, but a, a riser throughout the whole process and uh, a really, really fun player to watch play football. Okay. Pros, super impressive athlete. And that was clear uh, before he blew up the combine. It's, it's not just all about the time speeds. Like when you watch him uh, play football, he is really good and, and, and not just really good. I know that's big analysis there, not just really good, but it's clear that like, he's the, He's the guy on the field. He moves different. He moves faster. He moves at a different speed, especially in the Mac. Um, he's just a different guy. Heavy cover three scheme at Toledo, which fits Green Bay. And frankly, you know, fits kind of the league. I mean, it's his own league now. Whether you're playing cover three or cover four doesn't matter that much from a cornerback perspective, from your responsibilities. You're, you're either a deep quarter, you're a deep third. And so he's going to be valuable to the whole league. But if Halfley wants to play a ton of cover three, he's going to be super valuable Green Bay, and and he would be one of my, uh, you know, top like pants off guys at at twenty five. I think we've moved past the point where they don't have to trade up for him, though. I, I'm not one hundred percent on that. I don't know for sure, but that's where I'm leaning. Is that Quinion? Um, you know, he's not like Alt, Fashanu, Bowers, the three quarterbacks, neighbors, Adunze, MHJ. Like I'm not just guaranteeing that Quinion Mitchell won't be there for Green Bay. But I'm definitely willing to have the conversation about Quinion Mitchell not being there uh, with, with Green Bay having an opportunity to take him. His acceleration is elite. His recovery speed is elite. Th those two kind of are married to each other. Super smooth in the back pedal and very technically sound, and I appreciate that. And, and I've talked about this with some other guys, and, and specifically sometimes with smaller school guys, where they will be so much the best athlete on the field that they get a little bit lost in the in the in the details. They're not the biggest technicians because Quinion Mitchell in the Mac, uh, you know, he he even said, I think at the combine, he said, I'm the best player in the history of the Mac. Of course, Ben Roethlisberger went in the Mac, Khalil Mack was in the Mac. There's a lot of a lot of good football players. I think there's two uh, Fisher, you know, the, the Central Michigan kid, Greg Jennings was a Mac kid. Uh, it's he's he's but but hey, I need that. I need a psychopath to play a corner. I mean, I need that I am the best guy in the world mentality because you're going to give up a touchdown. You're going to give up a 30-yard reception. You're going to give up a bunch of, bunch of things, and the best corners in the world don't care. And, and of course, they, they don't want to give up those plays, but the next play, they're right back where they were as an I'm the effing man, even though I just gave up a 15-yard you know first down, I'm still better than the guy across from me. You need to have that mentality. He absolutely does have it. Um, route rec recognition is excellent. He doesn't get outsmarted. He does not panic. Uh, you see coverage busts from the Packers all over the place last year. I don't think Quinion Mitchell is going to be the cause of a ton of coverage busts at the NFL level. I think he's super smart. Incredibly, guys. And I do mean incredibly productive on the ball. I don't think I've seen anybody else with more. He had 27 pass breakups over the last two seasons. I don't think there is a defensive back in the Power five, or excuse me, not power five, FBS football that had more than 27 pass breakups in the last two years. I'm, I'm not looking exactly at it, but 27 PBUs is, 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 is doing stuff. And he also had six picks. So he got his hands on the football 33 times. That's ball production that the Packers weren't even in the realm of having in the secondary last year. Um, just playmaking that they flat out don't have. Okay. Um, versatile guy, 109 bucks or, 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 uh, slot snaps last year moves inside moves outside the numbers they are sweet a 51.1 passer rating against in 2003 and a 34.8 passer rating against in the last two years i can't remember what the passer rating is if you just throw the ball at the dirt but i think it's close to 34.8 somebody can tell me in the comments because people always make that 
uh, I shouldn't say always, but people make that on uh, that joke or that they point that out sometimes on game broadcasts when a guy throws a couple picks or whatever. So somebody tell me what the uh, what the passer rating is if you just junk one because I think it's about what it was when targeting Quinion Mitchell in 2022. Uh, freak, freak in Indy. Freak, freak. Uh, no agilities. Didn't run agilities. I assume he'll run those or he's just happy with his stock and won't do anything. But I would guess that he'll run those at uh, Toledo's Pro Day. And he had an absolutely blazing 40 at 433 when you have above average, nearly prototypical size. I mean, I would love every cornerback to be six foot and one eighth, 195, not too tall, not too short. 195 is perfect, not too thick, not too thin. Per- he is the archetype for cornerback and certainly the archetype for Packers cornerback. Um, he is just that dude. Okay, cons. Uh, the Mac is not a very good league. And he did not grade out well against Ohio State in 2022 and didn't play particularly well against Illinois in 2023. So if you have, um, excuse me, if you have uh, level of competition concerns, if those, if those are, are real for you, well, then, uh, you know, those are, are, are there, right? Because again, played in the MAC, not a great league. And then, you know, did not play de- did not play super well against Ohio State. They gave up a hundred percent completion percentage in his targeting area at OSU in the game against OSU. And then in 2023, I didn't think he was super great against Illinois either. Um, played well though against Notre Dame and Colorado State in 2021. So kind of take it all with a grain of salt. Now, I, I'm not super worried about it, but we got to put something in the con uh status if he's not going to be CB1, and he's not. We will we'll get to that, but he is not CB1 for me. Not the best tackler in the world. Not terrible, but not the best. Um, he's not like, I think yesterday was probably NS Rakestraw. Uh, he doesn't tackle like Rakestraw. So uh, not something I'm super concerned about, but not necessarily like a plus in on the notes. So he was fine. Um, not, not great. And uh, you'd want him to improve. But ultimately, if he's as good as a shutdown guy and as a ball producer, I don't really, honestly, he could tackle like Dion and I, I wouldn't care. I, I wouldn't if he's if he's this good. Sometimes a little hesitant to click click and close you. He's got good eyes, but sometimes, um, you know, when I talk about him not panicking, sometimes to me, he almost doesn't panic too much. And and he maybe was like, I'm quick enough or I'm fast enough. I can really let this play out. And on the rare occasions where he does give up completions, I think that's sometimes what happens is I'm just such a good athlete that I can let him, you know, fake and, and stutter and do all this stuff. But then he actually makes his cut. He's like, oh. And, and again, this is not a consistent problem. We talked about his passer ratings when targeted, but there's got to be something in the cons. Okay, uh, Packers fit. Home run. Home run. Like I said, prototype size for them. Prototype 40-yard dash. Uh, you, you know, played football already in the Midwest. Has played outside in the cold. Uh, like, just everything about this kid, Quinion Mitchell, screams Green Bay Packer. A+. plus fit zero problems with the fit whatsoever and i think they'd be absolutely thrilled to get him i'd move up for him i would i'd find out i mean if it was me and and he started to drop just a little bit i would find out what like pick 88 could get me pick 88 in addition to 25 um and i'm i'm not i'll I'll, we'll just this is great uh this is great great radio here so just looking at the trade value chart, if we are talking about what pick 88 is worth, you're talking about uh, 47 points. It could get you to 23. <laughs> no, it could get you maybe to 20, 22 or 23. They wanted to move up three spots. Now, of course, pick 58 or 41, you know, you take 25 and 41, you can get in the top 10 to go get Quinion Mitchell. I would not do that. Um, just personally, how much I love this class between like player 25 and player 80 and how strong I think that group is. They did it. I'm not going to be mad because I think Quinion Mitchell has a chance to be um, that dude. I really do. Um, he could play inside or outside. There is the size there. I, I, I want him to shore up his tackling a little bit. If he's going to be green base full-time nickel, but I don't think you're taking this guy to play nickel, to, to be honest with you. Um, I think if you took Quinion Mitchell high, now you're looking at and- Andrew Phillips, you're looking at Jerry and Jones, you're looking at Mikey Sainer still, you're looking at Max Melton. We're looking at dealing with nickel corner later in the draft if you're taking Quinion Mitchell high, but I think he can play inside. Certainly has the size if you're looking for him to occasionally match up with like a flex tight end at six foot 195 and not get embarrassed. I think that's something that 
that he could do. Um, he's got, like I said, just prototypical size, man. He's tall enough. He's fast enough. We'll see how he does with the agilities, but nothing that I saw at Toledo would tell me that he's not going to break seven seconds in a three cone if he even runs one. Because like I said, look where his stock is now. He can probably only hurt his stock at the pro day. Now, who knows? Some guys love to compete. Roma Dunes, they love to compete, right? Um, also, the guys, because I'm you know covering North Dakota State, that's something that you'll see, which is a guy like Quinion, like when NDSU has had like Cody Malk last year, top 50 guy. Well, Cody did all the drills and told everybody he was going to do all the drills at NDSU because it put more eyeballs on his teammate. Teammates brought more scouts to NDSU's pro day. Same exact thing with a school like Toledo. If Quinion Mitchell tells scouts, hey, I'm doing everything, and I'm not working out at Ohio State's pro day, I'm working out at Toledo's pro day, that could bring in a ton of, of, uh, of eyes to his teammates, to the other guys trying to make, a, uh, make it to the league and kind of be one final nice thing that he does for the University of Toledo. Like I said, I've seen it at the mid-major level myself. Um, and, and speaking of the, the mid-major level, they have zero problems, guys. They don't care. Green Bay doesn't care. Um, Jordan Love, Utah State, mid-major. Christian Watson, North Dakota State, mid-major. Tucker Kraft, South Dakota State, mid-major. Carl Brooks, Bowling Green, mid-major. Romeo Dubs, Nevada, mid-major. Josiah DeGuara, at the time, Cincinnati, mid-major. MVS, South Florida, mid-major. Aaron Jones, UTEP, mid-major. They don't care. Okay, you're in the FCS, you're in the G5, and you can play football. They don't care. Green Bay doesn't. They will find you. They don't care. And and sometimes that has backfired. Like I don't think they're super thrilled with the the Deguara pick, but man, for where they took MVS and the rest of those guys, I mean, you're thrilled with Jordan Love. You'd like Christian Watson to stay healthier, but when he's on, he's their best guy. Tucker Kraft has looked awesome. Carl Brooks has looked awesome. Romeo Dubs has been awesome for where they took him. Like their 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 hit rate. What Greg Greg Jennings, Western Michigan, Donald Driver, Alcorn State, Brett Favre, Southern Mississippi. I, I can go way back. They don't care, man. The pack, they do not care. And they've been, by the way, doing good at not caring. Josh Sitton, UCF, TJ Lang, Eastern Michigan. I can go all day. Okay, they don't care. Anyway, um, overall grade, and this is going to be a shorter episode, but there aren't that many things to talk about because he's awesome. And I don't think he's going to be there. <laughs> so it is kind of a shorter episode. High number one on the very, very edge of a blue trip po- prospect for me with Quinion Mitchell. The only thing is, I just I wish he had played better against Ohio State and Illinois. That's my that's my only thing. You know, he had these showcase opportunities against high major, didn't go that well. I'm not worried about it, or I wouldn't rank him 14th overall and give him a solid round one grade. But it exists. Cornerback three, uh, right now, pulling up the uh, the old big board 3.0. World, did I do with that thing? Here it is. He is behind. Yeah, DeGene and Wiggins. He's behind DeGene and Wiggins. And there's a little, nah, he's right there with Terry and Arnold. And then I've got a little gap between them from a grading perspective. And, and then we get to Kool Aid. And then we, we kind of dip, dip and get to, I believe, TJ Tampa. Right. You get to the, the TJ Tampa, Ennis Rakestra, Kamari Lassiter area. And those guys are fine. And we'll talk about, I think, a lot of those guys. We have talked about a lot of those guys. But um, anyway. So that's where we're at with Quinion Mitchell, 14th overall, CB3, mid-round one grade, awesome player. Guys, thank you so much uh, for watching. If you're here on YouTube or listening, if you're taking this in through the podcast, how can you help us? How can you help us? Easy. Buy the Green Bay Draft Guy, powered by Packer Report. Use the promo code DAILY, as in the Daily Draft, D-A-I-L-Y, for 10% off that guide. Come check us out over at Packer Report. Okay, the first month is always a dollar for VIP status. You get stuff in season from Dusty. You get really cool stuff from NFL personnel and inside sources that Mark Echo has. I will do some VIP protected draft work throughout the season. Uh, Jacob Morley's doing some awesome VIP protected stuff, and it's just the number one way to support uh, me and my group of writers. It's it's just the number one way to do it. First month is a dollar. You don't like us? See ya. I'll give you I, that. Has been a standing promise from me. I will give you the dollar back. I will. Um, and if you if you like us, it's an easy transition to a discounted annual rate. Uh, other than that, follow me. I'm at Ross Uglum on X, formerly known as Twitter. I do everything that you are supposed to do here on the Pack a Day podcast. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications so that you get absolutely every piece 
of Packers content that the Pack a Day crew puts out for you on a daily basis. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and go Pack Go.